Hey, the power's back on, so I'm going to finish my video, Sugar Freedom World Carnivore Month Results, Unusual Occurrences, Paradoxes, a funny thing I learned on the way to carnivore. So three things. The first one is now that I eat mostly meat, I consume less of everything, including meat. So that was number one. Number two, feelings of compassion, connection, and love, similar to the rush I had when my, when my son was born. Just very quickly, I had a long labor, almost got the job done, but then had to have a C-section. And But that was before I went carnivore or even keto. At any rate, when the nurse brought my son to me the next morning, there was this incredible experience looking into his eyes of just monumental love, this huge rush. And I realized that I would love him for the rest of my life, even if he didn't love me back. And of course, that's just love. But it's also this amazing rush of oxytocin and all of the wonderful hormone rushes that you get after you deliver. And what is really wild is that after about four days on carnivore, I started to get this absolute rush of well-being, love, connection, this sense of connection to the world. And uh, yes, glad to see my power is back too. So now I'm talking about this other carnivore paradox that what is so strange about just going, just animals, no plants, these amazing feelings of well-being, connection, and I'm just going to say it, almost this sense of, of universal love. I know it sounds wild, but it was very similar to that feeling that I got when I first looked into my son's eyes after I gave birth. And I have this understanding that there is this chemical connection, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, that when you are well, you experience well-being and you experience these amazing feelings. And it made me dive into oxytocin. And I didn't realize that there was this antagonistic connection, this fight between oxytocin and cortisol. And so when we're eating the right way and we're sleeping well and we're training well, that all of these hormones rebalance and readjust. I had done a video on dopamine. I did a video on serotonin. I did another video on POMC, another video on getting into ketosis and how that influences GABA. It's real, you guys. These Going carnivore has this amazing, almost drug-like effect. And I used to say when I was a personal trainer, I used to have a saying, anything that's powerful enough to have an effect is powerful enough to have a side effect. So that was one of the big things when I was working with clients and we were going into ketosis, talking about you know being aware, you know, talk to your doctor, especially if you're on insulin or if you're on metformin, because this is going to cause powerful changes in you physiologically and also emotionally. And the other thing that is really, really bizarre is I decided to go carnivore again because Honestly, one of the, my main motivators is that I wanted to look better. I wanted to be, be leaner, get my waist a little bit smaller. It has a youthening effect. Um, you know, I'm 56 and it just, it tends to make your skin clearer and your eyes brighter and all of these good things. So I really was going carnivore to go after looking better. But all of a sudden this morning and really yesterday, I'm thinking about just having the sense of, I really don't care as much. I, I really don't care as much how I look. I'm getting ready to go in front of the camera and I'm like going, I'm gonna put on my black t-shirt and I'm gonna put on some makeup and I'm gonna wear my glasses and I just don't care. And the, the crazy thing about it is, is I believe that what's, what I'm experiencing, this feeling of like just being willing to get on camera and do my work is a reduction in social anxiety. And it's making me realize that probably some of my obsession with my own appearance probably has to do with those imbalances. So I'm seeing this amazing reduction in social anxiety, even to the point where I am less interested in how I look and I'm more interested in what I can do. And as a result, um, I have been working on uh, my arias. I'm a singer. I've been working on several different arias. I've been working on a show that I'm going to be doing in March, whether or not the theaters are open. Everything I'm singing is in the public domain. It's all classical music. So if there's no theater to put it on, I don't care. I'm going to put up a backdrop and I'm going to do it on camera. So it's this incredible feeling of, of motivation, this feeling of freedom, 
sugar freedom, that I'm just going to do what I want to do. I've been working on my guitar. I've been doing my guitar practice, doing my piano practice, working with my dogs, better relationship with, relationship with my husband and my son. Just invaluable. You just can't beat it. All right, so there's all of the good stuff that, you know, eating less of everything and consuming less of everything, including meat, feeling compassion and connection, and wanting to do work for the sake of the work instead of wanting to do carnivore for the sake of how I look. However, before the power went out, I was talking about doing these good things and still not losing weight and still not getting leaner and what I would do and what I used to do. Hey, look, it's a kettlebell. So back, um, closed the studio in 2016. There were some problems with the flooring and with the... Um, there were some problems with the location, so we went ahead and closed down. But before I closed, I was running transformation challenges, transformation contests with um, a cash prize. Incredibly effective. And we got to the point where I would usually do about a dozen clients at a time. We got to the point where we had like 100% success rate, where everyone lost at least weight and sizes and usually both and everybody lost inches especially losing uh, inches around the waist which is really important because i was working with um a lot of women over 40 50 60 and beyond and i was working with young women too my biggest success story was a gal who um, had had three children quite quickly had gained a lot of weight and was dealing with central obesity and she lost like 27 pounds in six weeks which was the record but what helps, what's for us that I'm gonna talk about right now is that the average consistent weight loss that we would see in six weeks would be 10 pounds, very consistently. And a lot of it would come off in the first three days we were doing a ketogenic approach, not carnivore, but no sugar, no grains, no vegetable oils. We'd see about five pounds come off in the first three days. And what that was is that was just the loss of inflammation, water flushing. And then consistently every week after that, we'd see, a loss of a pound and it was all coming from fat because we were seeing their bodies just shrink and tighten, especially in the waistline. So I'm working with women in their 50s and 60s and a couple in their 70s and they're all losing weight. And if you're insulin resistant and you're over 40 or 50, you know how hard it is to lose weight, especially if you've been through menopause. So what is it that we were doing that was working consistently for all of them? and I call it firing on all cylinders. Not only were we reducing sugar, sugar, <laughs> reducing sugar and grains and vegetable oils and getting into that ketogenic state, what we were also doing was maintaining or building muscle, at least maintaining, and appropriately, hopefully, ideally, that's the word, ideally building muscle at least we were maintaining it. And then we were also doing interval training. So I believe that the reason why everybody in those groups lost weight, inches, or usually both, is because once again, firing on all cylinders. And so it was, the eating was right, got the food right, reducing carbohydrates to the level where they would release fat and lose weight. And it was different for everyone. The gal I talked about who lost 27 pounds, she was like me, she could not eat fruit. And we even talked about this fact that when, when we eliminated fruit and when our only carbohydrates were coming from vegetables that grow above the ground, what we both experienced was this amazing indifference to overeating. We just were not hungry between meals. It was like, eat our meals and then do not care couldn't care less, you go ahead, eat that food, I don't care. And that was the feeling that we got. But in order to get that, we couldn't even have berries or Granny Smith apples. So I think that that was really crucial. And certainly if you're watching this because you're doing World Carnivore Month, I think one of the, just the firepower, <laughs> the effectiveness of carnivore comes from the fact that we have just eliminated anything that could possibly spike our insulin or trigger our cravings because I think that those are slightly separate. Um, I, I believe that I am a sugar addict. I call myself a glucomaniac because I get this crazy feeling when I eat the sugar. I think it has to do with the dopamine rush that I simply cannot stop until all the sugar is gone. And this client of mine, I, I think that she felt the same way. On the other hand, there's 
insulin resistance, which I believe is a little bit more systemic, which you might not have that craving, but you might not be able to lose weight. And that one I wanna pull up. I have been reading Gary Tobbs, latest book, The Case for Keto. And what's really cool about this is there's actually a chapter in here where he talks to Georgia Eade about how she has gone carnivore. So he's, he's kind of like me. Um, this understanding that a ketogenic approach can go all the way to an animal-based approach where you're practically not eating that many, uh, that many carbs at all. My husband is home. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm gonna let the dog out. Hang on. <coughs> Doing a video. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> oh, live video, it's so much fun. All right, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up that section, of course, firing on all cylinders, but, but the case for keto. The incredible thing about Gary, oh my gosh, the science, the research, all the studies are in here. If you are dealing with having to talk to your doctor or talk to your friends and they're like, oh my gosh, you're eating just meat, it's gonna kill you, ha! Huh? Well, you might wanna get this book and read this book and then there's all of the, all of the studies, which Gary always does in the back so that if you need to give something to your doctor, they're, they're you know, all the indexes and everything. If you need to give something to your doctor to say, hey, look, look at all these doctors in here, you can give them that. Or you might even give them the, the carnivore code. All right, so wrapping up the paradoxes with carnivore, no hunger, just these feelings of well-being, feelings of love, consuming less, using less, and also being willing to work more. I do answer questions on Quora, and I just wanna go into something that a lot of the young people who are contacting me are talking about. No place to train, no room. They're, they're in their parents' house. They really don't have you know control over where they can go or what they can do in order to get healthy. So many of them are gaining weight, and so many of them want to lose weight. The solution is, at least for me, if you can, just got your yoga mat right here. Yoga mat goes out in your bedroom. This is the guest bedroom here. You don't need much room and a kettlebell. And I promise I will make a video. I'll call it like, I might even do it right here in the guest bedroom. I'll call it like, you know, the bedroom, not the bedroom workout, but where you're literally doing an entire training session, just like next to your bed. And where I'm saying to these young people, and I'm saying to you, even if you have a tiny bit of space in your bedroom, you can do um, a Tabata of kettlebell swings, and then you can do a series of resistance exercises to get you lean. And then what I would also say to young people, people under 18, we have to be very careful with our youth giving them advice on uh, nutrition and on eating. What I would say to them is go ahead and start with the guidelines, adequate protein, adequate fat, and then try to keep your carbohydrates, well, don't overmanage them. But what I would do, like what I would suggest to a kid would be, I'd say, okay, go ahead, have a serving of a low sugar fruit at breakfast, have a salad and a vegetable at lunch, then have a salad and a vegetable at dinner, but make sure you're getting adequate protein at those meals. And for me, that would be a couple of eggs at breakfast, um, you know, a four ounce serving of meat at lunch, and another four ounce serving of meat at dinner, although probably more. But this is what I would say to a young person. And, you know, make sure, I'd tell them, you know, have a glass of milk in there. But that's the difficulty that we have with our young people is we have to be careful about how we advise them, but they need help. And so what I would say to a young person who's under 18 is I would give them just like the, the sugar freedom maintenance program, which has a little bit of fruit in it, plenty of vegetables. But of course, if you're an adult and you get to choose for yourself and you are struggling with working, with losing weight and struggling with appetite, I would say, get on that carnivore bandwagon, get your appetite under control, feel great, and then see what happens from there because I'm gonna wrap up with one of the original carnivore diets, Blake Donaldson, MD's Strong Medicine, which was written in 1961 and which is free. You can get the free PDF. And once I do some notes on this video, I will put that PDF in the notes and you can read what Dr. Donaldson was recommending to his patients way back in 1961 and all of the different health issues that it helped correct. But if you're trying to
to get that weight off and it's still not budging, even when you're eating right, I would add some weightlifting, add some intervals, and I'll do some more videos to describe that. In a nutshell, drop sugar, lift weight, get some sleep, and some intervals in there too. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This is the Sugar Freedom Channel. And as I always say, eat for yourself and be well. See you soon.